Hello and welcome everybody to the Silver State. Why do they call it the Silver? Why are they called Silver Strikes? We're going to talk about Silver Strikes, maybe a little bit about collecting versus investing. I don't want to dwell too much. I could make I could make a whole series about investing and collecting, separate series. So for me, my first experience with the Silver Strike, this one happens to be the Flamingo 50th anniversary. Really super exciting. This one came out in 96, so this is the 1946 is when they opened the original the original strip casino. So I first saw one of these when I was a child in Vegas. My dad had a friend from, at the time it was Cal State Northridge. Is it still Cal State or is it the University of Northridge? I forget, but either way, Cal State Northridge, the University of California State at Northridge. I think that's right. Anyway, he and my dad were good friends and so we were friends with his family. And so we would all go to Las Vegas together and we would have you know big buffet meals and things. And one day he comes back in the evening to the hotel room. And he's sporting one of these silver, not this particular one, but a silver strike. And he's like, look kids, should I keep this or should I exchange this for $10? And we were like, dad, it's pirate treasure. You know how it is when you're like eight or nine. It's like anything like precious metal is like pirate treasure. It's a treasure, you have to keep it. And so we pressured him to keep it. And of course, the next morning he exchanges it for $10 because it's a redemption token. And we were a little disappointed to say the least. So. Silver strikes are the payout from certain slot machines. The last time I saw one of these ooh, was more than 10 years ago. It was in Fremont Street. Was it 10 years ago? And yeah, so they had the, the silver strike, you know, slot machines. And the, if you guys remember back in the day of Vegas, it was very much you would get $1 tokens or you would use nickels or dimes or quarters okay that's just how it worked back in the day now they have their voucher system i think you can put money on certain cards and anyway there's lots of opportunity to to gamble in vegas now without coins i don't think i think it's really hard to find a machine that accepts coins last time i looked so this was a payout so you would win this as like if you hit a certain strike on your slot machine this would drop out and i remember like the one my dad had was in a plastic case so they would drop out as like a a reward voucher token kind of a thing but they were made out of silver which i think was awesome right so you could go to the cage you could get your ten dollars or you could just hang on to this as a collectible and there are people that just play this they, they would play the silver strikes just for the silver strikes that's all they were doing that was their reward is they liked these and they're good souvenirs you know they're awesome so why not keep them so for me silver strikes have always been kind of interesting and romantic i know like statistically they're you're just paying a little bit extra for a silver coin you can just go out and buy one that's what i did with this i just found these on ebay i find these on ebay occasionally like when i'm older i'm like what was that silver coin my dad had in vegas so i was like silver coin vegas and then i was like recognized instantly yes silver strike a silver strike is silver as you can see here 0.999 pure silver and then they put a little brass plating around the outside this one it's hard to see but this brass plating has a little bit of patina it's just starting to color which i really like it makes it look a little bit older and really really cool so this is the 1996 flamingo silver strike 50th anniversary and i have a whole bunch of these i have some more of these maybe i'll show them if there's an interest i'll show these in future videos now i want to talk a little bit about collecting versus investing so with poker chips too so it's not just like you know silver or gold but like there are a million in investables to me the difference is intent investing is the idea of trying to make gains where collecting is buying things that you like that you just want to hold indefinitely if not the rest of your life at least for me i know that's how i feel like i buy things i like and i collect them poker chips being one of them and silver strikes being another i have several others like sports cards a bunch of other things so either way I, but that I, I want to clarify that this is my opinion because in my opinion it doesn't matter if they increase in value or not a collectible can increase in value but if you have no intention of selling it then it's not an investment in my opinion so that's my opinion now another question that's interesting in this day and age is should you be collecting or maybe investing in poker chips and how do i feel about poker chips as an investment well Oh dear, where do I start on this? I think it's an okay investment, but it's not something that I personally would pursue as an investment because I feel like I'm getting pretty good returns on what I have. And I have a very diverse portfolio. I have cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin. I have stocks and bonds. It's just, there's a huge variety of things that I invest in. 
And so to see these as an investment, I don't really see that. Like I'm used to huge volatility. I've seen options almost on a daily basis, almost on a daily basis. Somebody's going to be really pedantic about it. Well, there's the one day. Almost on a daily basis, there's a stock option that moves a thousand percent. All right. So when my buddy comes to me, like I, like I said, I've owned Bitcoin for a long time. I own Bitcoin. He comes to me and he's like, I'm so excited about Bitcoin. I've made 600% return in three years. I'm like, that's okay. You know, I've made 400% return in a day. Does that make me better or does that introduce volatility? It's like, if you think you want volatility, there are places you can go to find extreme volatility. So to me, you know, and the other thing that cracks me up, all right, I need to have this little conversation about, you, you can enjoy the views here. I want to talk a little bit about this conversation. So one of my friends in Atlanta, right now we live in Columbus, we, move, we have a few moves scheduled. He was talking to me about how he doesn't like fiat currency. Fiat currency, there, there's, there's no backing. There's no gold. There's no value to it. It's just the government. It's just the integrity of the government. He's like, Bitcoin's better. I'm like, how is it better? He's like, well, it has blockchain. I'm like, what is blockchain? And he didn't know. He's like, I don't know. It's, it's secure. I'm like, yes, it is secure. But all it is, you can think of it as it's a public ledger. It's just a public database that's secure with a ledger of everybody, who owns what. It's like, to me, I think of it, it's similar, obviously, with an equity, there's a company backing it, but like with equities in the stock market, it's like owning stock these days is just an electronic registry. It's like, oh, who owns this? Oh, this is the person who owns this. This is the person, you know, who can sell it. And that's all it is. It's just an electronic database. Same with Bitcoin. And how is that better than our US currency? I'm not sure. As far as a currency, I'm not convinced it is a better currency. But as an investment vehicle, I feel like Bitcoin is an investment vehicle where U.S. currency, eh, maybe not so much, but it could be argued either way. So it's just an interesting conversation. And I'm not saying now, remember, none of this is advice. I haven't given any advice here. These are just my opinions and my thoughts about each. Remember, like I said, I own Bitcoin, I own stock, I own bonds. I own a variety of investment vehicles, okay? But for me, these are collectibles. And I, frankly, I don't have problems with people flipping these. You know, there's, it gets really complicated. You get economies of scale and can, is it scalable? Is like, and how much, you know, profit consistency do you have? And it's a lot of work. So for me, not something I'm gonna do. You're not gonna see me flipping coins. People offer to pay for, you know, some of these they wanna see. Nothing you see in front of the cameras for sale, okay? And while I'm on this subject, the only email that I do business on is hobbyphilic at gmail.com. Okay, I'm not going to be on Etsy. I'm not going to be on eBay. I'm not going to be on some weird WhatsApp or something communicating with people. I only communicate business through hobbyphilic at gmail.com. If you go to my YouTube page about and you look at that email address right there, that's the email address that you do business with. Okay, so anything else. I will have conversations with people on Patreon, but the only legitimate <laughs> conversation that I'm going to have online isn't through forums, isn't through business is only done through that email address. So if anybody else is trying to do business with you from another email address or another platform, uh, write me an email and uh, make sure that it is me before you try to do business with somebody claiming to be me. All right, that said, let me know your thoughts about investing, collecting. Do you like these silver strikes? I don't think so, and this is my opinion, for me, with my investing style, silver is not something I'm interested in investing in, neither is gold. It's just not what I'm looking for in my investments at the moment. So excited to read the comments. Do you remember silver strikes? Are there, and more importantly, is there a machine that still offers silver strikes? Is there, are there still silver strike machines in Vegas? Fremont, does the four queens still have a silver strike machine? I'm interested to to read all this. Either way, thank you for watching. If you want to support this channel, you can support me through Patreon. We have great conversations over there. And that support over on Patreon is just general support. You can also support me through my Amazon shop. I'll put a link in the description below. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe.